Hey, what's going on guys, Ira here, and welcome back to another video on some F1 2018 game career mode ideas. Obviously, we've had the two videos so far listing off in total 20 different things that we all want and that I want in the F1 2018 game for career mode or any future F1 games, really. If you have missed either of those videos, by the way, check the links in the description or there'll be an annotation to one of them in the top right of your screen right now and go check those out before you get to this one because this one's a bit of a different one. So, in the uh, last video we did on this, the 10 more things we all want in uh, F1 2018 career mode, I asked you guys in the comments if you guys would like me to go for a bit of a deeper dive into some of these ideas, potentially photoshopping and illustrating what I mean and try and give us a little bit of a, a tease of maybe what could be possible or what the screen could look like in the game. So that's what we've gone today. So today we're going to focus on the contracts and the, I talked about the reputation level, how that could play into the contracts and you getting new contracts and I feel like we can take a lot from the FIFA games and try and bring that over into the F1 game. So today what I've done is I've photoshopped an idea and a concept of how we could go about doing contract negotiations with other teams using FIFA 17's kind of contract system as a template actually. So here we are then, a uh, contract screen idea that I photoshopped based off the FIFA ones but uh, geared towards F1 obviously. So I'll set the scene here. So here we are, we're a McLaren driver with 12 races under our belts in this opening season of ours. We've won three races, we've had seven podiums, and so we've been given an evaluation of 17 million and 680,000 in terms of our value. So if we get that to a weekly sum, if you were to divide, divide that by 52, that gives us a salary of what we could potentially get of 340k per week. We're in great form, our reputation level is fantastic, and that alludes to 82 points. So that 82, so what I'm saying is obviously we have the reputation level right now uh, in the game. Game. And that's, I'm going to say, is out of 100. And obviously, halfway, uh, the halfway point's 50, so we're about 82. So we're pretty damn high. And so that gives us a fantastic rep level. And so that's shown up in purple. And so that gives us a better kind of pulling uh, uh, strength on the team we're trying to get a contract with. So at the moment, I'm with McLaren, but we're going to try and get a contract off Aston Martin Red Bull Racing. So with the re a fantastic rep and the form that we're in, great form, obviously seven podiums, three wins. So that's 10 out of 12 races that we've been on the podium or even uh, you know three or three race wins so really great stuff for a debutant in McLaren F1 obviously so form is really damn great so those two things we have a lot of pull power in terms of getting a good deal here uh, for ourselves for Red Bull there and the valuation well we've just kind of gone for slap bang in the middle of you know we're gonna match what our valuation is so the valuation the game could potentially give us and so the driver demands I want to demand a one-year contract because you know you guys know me I don't want to be tied down to a team so I want to one year contract. Salary per week, I've set that to 340k, so that's simply, as I said, the 17,680,000 split 52 ways, so obviously per week that adds up correctly, but you know what? Because we have a great reputation, a fantastic reputation even, and great form, we could afford to try and bump that up and ask for more money per week because we're in such great form. If you're not, you might have to undervalue yourself and you might have to go lower than your value, your evaluation as a whole over the year because that valuation target would be over the whole year. But our current contract's running out at the end of this season. We've got four months left. We're only being paid 268000 per week and our team status is second driver. So I want the first driver coming to Red Bull. So that's my driver demands that I've set Aston Martin Red Bull Racing. Now, if you saw the first video that I talked about my 10 ideas for career mode, this is the first one where I talked about this could be a back and forth over four race weekends. You could be, you know, firstly talking to your PR agent saying, I want to drive for Red Bull. So we submit a little kind of interesting. They say, yeah, we're interested. Let's open up talks. And then you demand. So we're at the demand screen right now. You know, that could be a previous screen. Actually, we demanded a certain, uh, certain amount of money, uh, a contract left the team status and then this screen would be when the team comes back to us so this would be the third iteration this would be probably the third race weekend where Red will come back to us with an offer and so their offer terms are so they're going to offer us more wage than we asked for but they want us to drive for two years they're going to give us a sign on bonus which is pretty damn nice but that also means they want a team status of equal so you can see that they've not quite matched us they've actually improved in some aspects but they've kind of not given us what we wanted in other aspects you know the equal 
equal driver and a two-year race length. So we can either accept the offer, renegotiate. So that's another entire race weekend of negotiating. So it's entirely up to you if you want to let this run out to the end of the season because we've only got four months left uh, till the season's ended. So it's entirely up to you if you want to drag out this entire process and renegotiate. And remember, at the end of the renegotiation, they could just pull the plug. You know, Christian Horner could just say, nope, I don't want this anymore. And you wasted five race weekends trying to negotiate this contract. Or you can just decline it straight up and say, nope, you know what? I think Ferrari want to sign me maybe. So let's go for them. Uh, or you can just accept the offer, get that pen out and sign it on the on the bottom right screen and you can do the deal. And so from next season, you'll be driving for Red Bull Racing. And I think this just opens up a lot more intricacy into the career mode. You feel a bit more alive, a bit more in charge of not only you and the PR agent, but your, your career, your actual livelihood as an F1 driver in terms of you're actually interacting with these teams and you're actually trying to negotiate, uh, you know, uh, terms of the deal. Now, I know you might be asking, what's the whole point? You know, what's the salary going to be worth? You know, what, what what's it? But, you know, I'm just throwing out a few little things off the top of my head, but maybe potentially they could lock certain helmet designs, certain, you know, overall designs, or I don't know, just certain other aspects of the game could be locked off and you have to purchase them with in-game currency that you're earning right now with your driver demands. Or it just doesn't have to be. I mean, necessarily, it doesn't need to match a whole lot. I mean, to be honest, it could just be a case of you just want to try and earn a lot of money for the sake of pride. I mean, maybe your earnings could be on the leaderboard. I mean, Codemasters, for some reason, love to put all the career mode stats on leaderboards, even though personally for me, um, in my opinion, right now, what we've got on F1 2017, uh, at least I don't look at the leaderboards. I don't, give a, I don't give a flying toss about the leaderboards, but maybe this is something that other people could care about in terms of how much earnings you've got of your career mode. You know, maybe you want to get to the top fat stacks, top earner of F1 2018 career mode globally, how much are you earning over your career mode compared to other people? So that's why maybe you want to you want to negotiate. But that's what I'm saying. It doesn't necessarily have to actually mean too much for the, you know, for the racing per se, but it's something that in real life would happen. You as a driver would care about your salary. You would care about your team status and your contract length. And though not, those aren't separate variables. They're all connected, you know? The salary might dictate how much your contract length is or your team status is. It's not separate things that the team just, uh, you know, decides, oh, by the way, you've been driving well, so here you go, here's second driver. You know, that might be something that you've agreed upon when you came into the team. And I talked about reputation level, working that into the interview phases, and maybe that's something you can try and influence. So I said the reputation there was purple with Red Bull Racing. Fantastic, yeah? So maybe you could have really boosted that by answering a question in the paddock uh, in interviews about that. So we go to this next screen now. So uh, excuse the, the photoshopping on the left there, but yeah, imagine we're driving for McLaren. We're sat next to Lewis Hamilton, Daniel Ricciardo, the, 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 the paddock asked question for us. The paddocks have been speculating your future lately. Do you see yourself moving at the end of the season? So you get three different options like we had back in 2010, but this time they matter a lot more and it's a bit more completely connected to the reputation level. You have three different answers. No, not really. I'm quite happy with where I am right now with McLaren F1 team. Uh, no, we'll see. Who knows what the future will bring? Yes, I think so. I want a new challenge. I'm open to discussions right now. And obviously the question are worded in a way where they can just plug in the name. You know, you can replace with McLaren F1, with, with Red Bull Racing, with Ferrari. You know, it's a very easy answer. They can easily swap out the team names there. And the other two are very generic answers that don't need to affiliate to a certain team. So let's paint some scenarios and some pictures here. So I could say uh, the number one option. No, I don't really want to. I'm fine with where I am with McLaren. So that boosts our reputation with McLaren. And so we've got four months left on our contract going back to the previous screen. That may mean that McLaren and come to us with some offered terms of a much better contract for next season with them. Maybe potentially they're going to offer us the first driver a better salary, but the catch might be they want us to stay for longer. Then we can maybe renegotiate back. No, I want to only want to stay for one year and I want to have the option of going out earlier, but I don't mind a lower salary, but I do want that first driver option. Or well, let's paint a different picture. We're in McLaren. We want to leave. We've only got four months left. I want to join Red Bull, but Red Bull haven't actually publicly shown any interest on, re on the reputation screen, but it is known that Ferrari might want to sign us, but we don't necessarily want to go to Ferrari. So if we pick the last option, yes, I think so. I want a new challenge, and I'm open to discussions right now. That's going to boost Red Bull by quite a bit. That's going to help us in our negotiations with them. But that's also going to also be able to affect other teams that potentially might want to sniff around 
around and sign you, but you yourself might not be interested. But obviously you can't control that in real life. If you answer a question like that, if a driver answers that, multiple teams might take that as something. So Ferrari might be like, okay, hang on, could we sign him maybe? But Red Bull at the same time are going to be like, okay, we're open to the discussions. You want to drive for us? Let's go and let's do this. Or you take the middle option, which is just, uh, we'll see. Very neutral option. Nothing changes. No reputation goes up and down for teams. And that's another thing. If we uh, say the last option, yes, I think so. Something I haven't added on is actually probably then a minus symbol would come from McLaren. Maybe minus 30 for McLaren. They're kind of hurt that you said they want to that you want to move away. Just like when you move at the end of the season of F1 2017, you know, you, that's the only time reputation really takes a big hit or if you underperform. I feel like interview question could really be a big factor in it. Just like it almost used to be in F1 2010, but obviously 2010, it never used to be this intricate. I feel like now you could really get it this intricate of really being a big impact of what you're saying. Your words carry a lot of meaning and then couple that with a really intricate contract screen like we showed you before, it would mean a whole lot more and make that entire process a lot more alive, a lot more immersive in the F1 2018 or future F1 games. I mean, again, this could be a big part of the off-season. You know, there was that mention in the last video we did, 10 more things we want in career mode. You know, one of the points was there needs to be a bigger deal between season to season. This could be it. There could be an entire, you know, uh, quote-unquote five-week period, yeah? So, like, we go from five different rounds, and like FIFA has, if, you remember, if you've played FIFA and you've played the transfer window, uh, they, short, they make ten hours seem like ten weeks, so we could make five weeks seem like five race weekend worths of time, where you have five different attempts of renegotiating and negotiating with teams off-season. You know, you finish Abu Dhabi, then you go to the contract screen, you have different offers on the table. Like FIFA, you could have an email system where you look through the emails, and then you see, okay, so I want to negotiate with Red Bull now. Okay, Ferrari want me, let's see what they're offering. Okay, they want that much, but I don't actually want to drive for them. Decline the offer, renegotiate with Red Bull. Okay, they don't like that, renegotiate again. Okay, cool, we want to sign that. Put pen to paper, Bob's your uncle, and you're in Red Bull then. But it's a lot more of an intricate setup post-season to actually make, make that feel like a bigger deal at the end of the day. So that's where I'm going to end the video then, guys. If you did enjoy this kind of little concept tease and, you know, just, uh, you know, really in-depth idea of what F1 2018 or future F1 career modes could look like, uh, smash that like button. Be sure to let me know what you thought in the comments below. And let me know if you want to see other ideas. Let me know which ideas you maybe want to see me try and Photoshop and try and illustrate maybe how it could work, you know, because it's always really nice. You know, it's always good talking about it, but it's, you know, if you're like me, maybe I'm a bit of a visual person. I love to see them come to life and see it visually. So let me know in the comments below if you want to see more Photoshopped ideas, potentially what we could have in future F1 games. If you're new around here, you can subscribe for weekly fall on content. I've been over. Hope you enjoyed today, and I'll see you guys next time.